Welcome to Freezing Real Podcast. I'm your host, Bridget, along with my husband, Chris. Weekly, we talk about being parents, what happened that week. It's basically our therapy session to vent out everything that we went through. We are boy parents. We have three boys, Enzo, Rhett, and Arlo. And if you'd like to get to know us a little bit better, you can check out our website, freezermilk.com, or follow us on Instagram at Freezer Milk Podcast. We also have YouTube and TikTok, Freezer Milk. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you enjoy. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. This is the show. This is where you get all your weekly... Tidbits and updates. Tidbits and updates and shit-talking and... (laughs) (laughs) It's been a week, hasn't it? Wow. How is it, like, already Wednesday? By the time you guys hear this, Wednesday slash Thursday slash Friday, whatever day you listen. But this week is going very fast. Well, I know why it's going fast. Like, we have... uh, a conference for your business going on. Yeah, which is all day, three days, so. Three days of like eight to five. It's been hectic. Yeah. Really hectic. Yeah. You know, with work stuff and kid stuff and. Work stuff. And work stuff. And now we're sitting on the patio. Yeah, we're t- Having some beers. It's fantastic. For now. For now. Sure, one of the one of the children will wake up soon and want to. Enzo got to go swimming yesterday. He was extremely excited about it, but he was not excited because we're not we're not at a, a season yet where all these days are consistent with weather. So no, like we're so we're Arizona. If you're new to our show, we're in Phoenix, and it's been all of a sudden a hundred degrees. Yeah, after for, having very for, cold winter for April, like a week ago it was fifty six. A week yeah. ago Wednesday it was fifty six degrees. As a, as a high. Yep. yep. And then yesterday and today has been 100. Yep. So yesterday the pool warmed up just enough for him to go swimming. So he got to go swimming and was extremely excited about it and wanted to go today. But today was much cooler and the water was much cooler. Yeah. He, wasn't he, wasn't, he was not happy about it at all. No. He He's at this weird phase. He's, just, <laughs> you know, eight years old, man. He very intelligent, very bright, very can we, can we, helpful. Can we pause and talk about his boy genius moments for a second here? Yeah. So, you were, what was happening? You were driving in the truck the other day. Yeah, so you, let, let me give you a little backstory here. Like, I, I take Enzo to school and I pick him up every day. Um, it's just the thing that me and him do. Um, it's your so, little bonding time. Yeah, I mean, it's our little bonding time. It gets me out of the house because I, I spend so much time at home. Um, and nowadays, you know, I, I get tired... I get tired of listening to news and a lot of times not a whole lot on the radio. And so I, I started listening to a lot of classical music, you know, Bach and Beethoven and Mozart and stuff like that. And it's very ther- therapeutic to me. You know, it kind of helps me to unwind and not think about shit all the time. <laughs> um, but I was picky, I picked uh, Enzo up from school the other day and he got in the truck and I was listening to. Um, Famous composure. I can't remember his name now for the life of me. Bocelli or something like no, that. it was Bach. Was it Bach? Yeah. I don't know. Johann was, Sebastian Bach. Yeah, I was listening to Bach, and Enzo gets in the truck after picking him up from school. He sits down, and he goes, he goes, ooh, I, you know, I like this song. This is, this is Sebastian, or Johann Bach. And I'm like, I, like, pa- I took pause. <laughs> like, I... Like, I almost pulled over. Like, I was like... <laughs> the fuck do you know this? I was like... You know, I really had to, like, think about it for a second. <clears throat> I looked back and I said, How do you know who this is? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, this guy, like, straight up... From from here. From, from, from here. He's like, yeah, this is Bach. And I'm like... Oh. I was how like, do you know who this is? I was is? like, how do you know who this is? And he's like, well, I learned about it in music class. I learned about him in music class. I'm like, that really resonated with you? Like, most kids aren't into, like, classical, classical music who at did that he, age. Who did he say, oh, but I like someone better? Yeah, he goes, I, I don't remember the name of the composer. I probably should. I'm, see, this is my point. I am much older than Enzo, and he's naming off these these musicians and these classical artists. Classical These music, classes, classical superstars. Well before any of our time. <laughs> and I'm... I feel like a big fucking... Did he say you I, like I, no, Chopin I, better or um, Tchaikovsky or something? I don't know. One of those famous yeah. composers. I couldn't even tell you. And that's my point. Like, I felt like a big fucking dummy. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Like, I know like three of them because 
I mean, their, their songs are in every movie or, you know, the, whatever, or any of these girl movies that we watch, they're always the wedding songs, the you know. Canon and D. Right. And like, so I, again, that's the only reason why I know the, and, you know, I listen to it just because it's therapeutic. So I'm like, you know, I really, so I, now, this last week, I have been made at a point when he's in the car to play classical music. I'm like, if this is what you're into, bro. More power to you. Go for it. And he, you know, this is the type of kid that loves to read. He's eight years old. Was he in second? Third grade. Second grade. Second grade. He's in second grade. Loves to read. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and he, you know, he goes over and beyond on his homework. He answers the questions on the back that you don't have to answer that nobody expects you to answer. It's extra work. So we That's had, who he is. We had classical music playing because we played classical on the TV a lot. Um, just because we get so tired of like... Ugh, Rhett's toddler baby shows that are so dumb. We get so tired of watching them. So we play classical from time to time in the house. So last night, or to, it was last night, he was like, oh, this is Four Seasons in, I don't know, E minor or some shit by so-and-so. And I was like, <laughs> what? what? And the then fuck? he hummed the tune. He like did, and I was like, the fuck? <laughs> How do you know this? I mean, it's awesome. I'm extremely proud like, of him. I'm so proud. Yeah. Like, I'm just like blown away that I'm like you. I remember you looked at me and you're like, "Boy genius, he's a boy genius." I was like this this morning. I was you're like, yeah. he's smarter <laughs> than us. I was <laughs> and driving, a better person. <laughs> I was driving him to school and the song from Nelly came on and I was like, Enzo, do you know who this is? This is Nelly. <laughs> he's you know? all no. He's like, uh, no. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. I feel like a dummy. Maybe he'll go to Juilliard. Maybe he'll do something great. Maybe he'll cure cancer. I don't know, but he's on that trajectory. <laughs> I think the best thing for him is to just steer clear of us. <laughs> <laughs> we need to ship him off to a private boarding school where he can't be impacted negatively from us. And just excel. Become a world like, famous composer. Who did, like, the, who did this person come from? Like, you're an extremely intelligent individual. But yeah. he is more like... Oh, he's leaps and bounds beyond me. Yeah, like he is, I'm and I'm not, the smartest person in his like lineage. Well, I'm not going to say you're not smart, but you're not. You are smart. You're extremely smart, and, and obviously his, his that has come from you, like mm-hmm. knowing what I know about other people. I'm the smartest person in his lineage on both sides, and he makes me look like a fucking dummy. Yeah, I mean, he brings home his freaking math homework, and I'm like, wow, like I what is what? Like I have Excel. You know, on a calculator. Right. Like, I'm like, what the fuck is this stuff? You know? It's just, uh, it's amazing to me. Did you know they're doing fucking fractions? I, I know. He's like, doing fractions. He's eight years old. He's doing fractions. I'm like, every time, you know, like, we put him in a school that was supposed to be harder and more challenging. Um, <laughs> what did he say? That yesterday? actually, one of my sisters had her boys in, and she actually pulled them from the school. Because it was too hard. Because it was too hard, and they gave too much homework. And her kids were getting F's. We literally never sit down with Enzo and do his homework. Like, we will, he will, he will go in his room, he goes in his room after school, does all his homework, brings it out, has us check it, we sign off on it. It's going to be like, Enzo is spoiling us in that way. But then we're going to get Rhett, and he's going to be, it's going to, we're never going to be able to teach him. Yeah. Rhett's probably like, Rhett is very smart, but if he struggles in school, it will be foreign territory for us. Yes. Because we have no concept of how to help him. I'm going to make Enzo teach him. (laughs) And they'll be like, I don't know what to do with you. Yeah, this guy, this guy's special. <laughs> it's but. it's so crazy though. Like he, what was it today? He was like, "This is the fastest I've done my math homework." I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Oh, I time myself every day." Like <laughs> what? He's so bored. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, like, what is yeah, this? This is the fastest I've done, and he's like, "It's actually pretty pretty he, easy he goes, now." He goes, "Cree, I got." I don't, another, I'm not challenged. He goes, "Cree, I got another principal of pride," and I'm like, "Yeah, how many is that?" He's like seven, and I'm like, <laughs> "How?" What do you mean seven? And he's like, yeah, seven. It's the most you can get in a year or whatever. And I'm like, in two years, I think. Or two years, yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the record for principal prides, which is basic. People you have don't to have straight A's. You have to have straight A's to get principal prides. He's gotten a principal principal pride every I, quarter. Every quarter that he's been in this school, I'm like, this kid. I don't know. He's like. I don't know. Anyway, so when he, you know, and that brings me to another point, you know, so when he gets emotional, right, I don't know how to handle it. Like he did tonight, he got very upset about something. 
Um, and we, we are at a place where we're trying to give him space, but also be there, right? Because that's pretty much all you can do at that age. Um, so we're trying to get him to open up more to us and feel more comfortable sharing and, you know, speak on his feelings and it's okay to have feelings. And, you know, if you want to talk, we're here, you know, try to be supportive. Um, what feeling are you experiencing? Yeah, exactly. So this evening he was extremely upset. It was very obvious. He did his little... And by extremely upset, we mean not like kicking tantrum. and screaming no, tantrum, not, but like do tantrums. pouty face... Shuff, eyes watering. Sh- feet against the floor, shuffling back to his room kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like eyes watering, like he's blinking back tears. Yeah. So very, very upset, and it was very obvious. <clears throat> um, so we asked him, you know, it was right before bedtime. He said, hey, you know, what do you what do you want to talk about here? Um, how can we help? You know, and I'm trying to get him to a place if he's upset with somebody, he needs to talk to the individual he's upset about because most of the time people that he could be upset about don't know that he's upset, and they don't know why he's upset at them. Right, and that's yeah. not fair. Um, so we're trying, we're, more or less, we're just trying to get him to talk it through, and and that's a lot of what he went to therapy for, and he has made great progress. Mm-hmm. Case in point, what you're about to talk about. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm prying, but not too pry. I'm not like, oh, you got to tell me, or you know, no. Can't like, help you. I'm giving Don't him the option. Me. Hey, um, you know, we can discuss it. I'm here. Let's whatever's going on. You know, and he kept pulling the whole, I, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. Okay, that's fine. So I said, um, it was time for bed, and we normally let him listen to Audible or read a book uh, until a certain time, and then it lights out. Um, I'm not going to deprive this kid of reading a book before bed, to be honest with you. Honestly, if he... After lights yeah, out. I mean, he, yeah, 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 if he wants to read... If, if, yeah, yeah, if I gave him a freaking headlamp, I'm like, yeah, that was pretty much an open door to read till midnight if you want. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Um... It's not, like, you'll I look, wasn't, not I, like you're failing in school. I wasn't exactly a reader. And I, now that I'm older, I wish I was. You know, so anyway, um, I set him to bed and he comes back. I go sit in my office and he comes back in my office that he's obviously upset. He's got tears. and come, I said, all right, let's, let's, let's talk. I said, I want you to sit down. I should tell me what's going on. He doesn't want to tell me anything, but he's visibly upset. I'm like, okay, well, that's fine, you know. Is it, you know, I'm trying to ask questions. Is it because you didn't get to go swimming today because the water was too cold? Were you upset because uh, you couldn't complete a level in your switch? No, no, I'm not upset, I'm fine. Okay, all right, well, let's go back to your room. Um, And I knew what I was doing here. I was like, let's go back to your room. We'll get your Audible on so you can listen to your book since you're out of books to read. Since we're horrible parents and we don't take you to the library every fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to buy him. I think we need to buy him a Kindle. Uh, no, fuck that. I'm going to buy him a library. <laughs> Here, you can have a library. Um, so I'm like, hey, you know, listen to your Audible. Um, and he's obviously pissed off in his room. And I'm like, all right, well, hey, listen to your stuff. Hang out. Lights out 830. If you're feeling like you want to talk about something, get something off your chest. My door is open down in the office. Come down and talk to me. I come walking out, I check the kitchen, I'm looking for you, and what do I know? He's walking back to my office. He comes to my office, and he sits down, and he goes, I'm mad because Mom told me I have to (laughs) listen to Audible or... Brain Zone Podcast. Or Brain, yeah, Brain Zone Podcast, which is like a kid, uh, it's more of like a... Kid science-y. Kid science-y podcast that he likes. And I said, okay, so, you know, that's your normal routine. You normally have you normally have books, but you don't have books. I'll take you to the library tomorrow. I said, what's the issue? Well, Mom told me I have to. And I was like, well, did you, <laughs> did you have something else you wanted to do? And he's like, yeah, I wanted to play with my Pokemon cards. And I said, Enzo, we send you to bed at 8. We send you to your room at 8 for a wind down because me and Mom need a fucking break, right? Your lights and also out. You need a wind down. Yeah, and your, wind down. your lights out is eight thirty. So from eight to eight thirty, if you want to play with your Pokemon cards quietly, you can do that. And I was like, so what's the issue? And he's like, well, mom says I have to. And I really had to think about it. I'm sitting in the office, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, why are you upset about this? Like, this doesn't make sense. And then it dawned on me. I'm like, I am exactly the same. <laughs> I was like. I do not want to be told I have to do something. 
Or like you I need to do something. Or I need to do something. Need is like your no, goal. I want it to be my choice, my schedule, on my timeline. <laughs> I don't want to be told that I have to or need to do something. And I it kind of really just hit me. And I was like, you know, I was like, look, let me talk to mom. But I can promise you this, that I guarantee she's not going to be upset if you just want to play with your Pokemon cards till 8.30. But at 8.30, it's lights out. So he shuffles on back to his room, you know, and gets back there. And, you know, that was that. But I'm like, it's really amazing with these kids. Like, even... Even, you know, Enzo is not my biological son. We're not blood related, right? But right. he's known me well enough, and I feel like a lot of the stuff You've that... You've known him since he was two. Yeah, I've known him forever. A lot of that stuff rubs off, you know, a lot of those traits and characteristics that I have. And I have to, like, watch myself, because he said something tonight. He, I, said, I was telling him that, you know, it's okay to feel, it's okay to be upset. You know, I'm upset a lot, and I wear my, my, my uh, feelings on my sleeves. And he's like, yeah, you're grumpy all the time. And I'm like, wow. Like, yeah, you're probably right. I am grumpy all the time. Because you know what? My dad was grumpy all the time. And I, what was the one thing that I always told you I never wanted to be? My dad. Uh-huh. So, I don't know. I just... Tonight was a very emotional roller coaster for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so now I'm out here drinking a Corona. So, we, I sat here when you told me this, and I was like, I didn't tell him he has to listen to Audible. Like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Selective hearing. I said, because he said, oh, because I said, hey, you, you can read till 8.30. And he's like, well, I don't have any books to read. I was like, oh, well, you have Audible and Brains on Podcast. You can do one of those. So I said, you have. Not have two. Not have he heard two. Have, he heard have two. Yes, because I said you can do one of those. Right. He heard. He has to do that. So. Well, it was similar to the pool experience because yesterday we had a warm enough day that the water got warm enough. It got up to 74 degrees because we had a 100 plus day. Right. I told him yesterday, he had asked me when he was in the pool, he's like, hey, can I swim tomorrow? I said, it really depends on the weather because we're expecting a cool down. If the water is, or what did I say? I said, the water has to be. 70. 74. For you. For you to go swimming. He took it as I said, it has to be 70 for you to go swimming. He missed the second four. He missed the second four in the sentence. So today he was extremely pissed off that he didn't get to go fucking back in the pool. You're like, it's 68. It was was 68 degrees. I had a temperature. You're like, it's not 74, bro. And you're like, you said 70. I said, I didn't say 70. I know what I said yesterday. But it's, it, again, it what, it, 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 again, it's what they hear. Yeah. And how they process that. It's amazing to me. All that for some miscommunication. It's yeah. crazy. But from that, I am so fucking proud, A, of Enzo, and B, of you. I'm proud of Enzo for the fact that, like, we have worked so hard with therapy for him to get to a place where he can express emotion and can recognize what he's feeling and express it. And he's doing that. It might not be directly when we ask, which is 100% fine. But the fact that he can do that now is fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean, how many eight-year-olds will come back in your office multiple times just to sit down so they can get it, they can figure out, they'll muster up the the courage to tell you exactly what they're feeling. Right, and then B, I'm so proud of you because I'm so proud of the fact that Enzo feels so comfortable with you to be able to talk to you about his feelings and that you have created that safe space for him. Even if, even though I'm grumpy all the time. Right? Like, I'm mom. I'm Maybe not... he has something to relate to. He's grumpy a lot of the time, too. Yes. Like, I, I, I have a lot going on, and he, he'll come for me, to me for comfort, but he won't come to me to express why he's upset. At least he has somebody that he feels comfortable in, you know? Like, he had a nightmare. Really he, had, he had a nightmare the other night, and what did I do? You comforted him. You know, he came and woke me up and was like, Mom, I have a nightmare, you know? Because um, I was like, Hey, what's up, bud? He was like, 4 a.m. He's like, I had a nightmare. I was like, Okay, do you want to snuggle? He was like, Yeah. And, like, I let him climb in bed and, like, spooned up to me. And I just held him and, like, rubbed his side and, you know, gave him a kiss on the forehead and just snuggled with him for, like, 10 minutes. 
but he finds comfort. He views me more as comfort versus being able to, like tonight he was mad at me, but versus being able to come and talk to me about his feelings. So I'm so, so proud that you have created this place where he feels comfortable to do that with you, where he can come to you and talk to you about his feelings. Uh, I, again, I think, you know, being a, going through, you know. Knowing what, he, what it's like to be a yeah, boy. Yeah, exactly. Going through that, being where he's at, it's extremely important for somebody of his age or even any age really to have somebody that they feel comfortable talking to. Well, it's like when we originally asked him if he wanted to talk to a guy or girl therapist, it was the same thing. It was, I want to talk to a guy because they know what it's like to be a boy. Which is logical. Yeah. So that makes me like think like, you know, that's part of why he feels so comfortable talking to you. Yeah. And I, well, and something we also have to take into consideration here is that he is eight years old. You know, he's starting to come into, um, you know, the hormones are changing. He's going to start, you know, going through, um, what is the word? Puberty. Pu puberty. That's it. Yep. So he's going to have a flood of emotions that he doesn't know how to process. And that's where if we can create that, like, foundation of... I mean, I'm still going through puberty. <laughs> if, if we can create that foundation... I'm just thinking about all your gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going through puberty with my gray hair beard. <laughs> A little salt and pepper beard. <laughs> that's from all your children. I know. It, when we met, my, my beard wasn't gray. All right. I didn't have gray hairs until we had red. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that kid has grayed me so much. Uh. But if we can have that foundation before he hits puberty of him being very natural and comfortable to come to you to have conversations about emotions, I think that gives us a leg up, mm -hmm. potentially, mm -hmm. on the puberty time frame of, like, this is already a normal pattern of behavior for him. This is already something that he does on the regular in his life. I think it's extremely important that one of us has to be understanding. We're not going to be both understanding. No. Because somebody has to play good cop, somebody has to play bad cop, and sometimes the roles are reversed. But somebody has to allow him the space and the ear to have those tough conversations. Yeah, because like I came to your office tonight. Um, and I kicked you out. <laughs> you're like, I was like, you're you like need to nodding go. your head. I was like, I was like, I was do like, you want you, me to leave? And you're like, like, yeah. And I was like, okay. Well, I mean, he wanted to talk to me. He didn't yes. want to talk in front of you because it was, was a, it was about you. Yeah. I'm sure if it was about me, he probably wouldn't have had it, wanted to have that conversation. I think you'll have to encourage him maybe tomorrow to talk to me, though. I will. Um, and just be like, hey, like, ask mom, you know, maybe tomorrow night, like, hey, mom, um, can I do other things aside from Audible or Brains On or reading from 8 to 8.30? What are the things I'm allowed to do? And maybe encourage him just to be like, ask mom and see what she says. I mean, dude, if the kid just wants to play with his fucking Pokemon right? cards, I am completely okay with that. Can we talk about those Pokemon cards? The only problem, the problem with that, though, is... is he plays with them, and he gets it all built up in his mind, and then the next morning at fucking 6 a.m., <laughs> when you're still fucking sleeping, and he's coming out to make his lunch so I can take him to school, all he wants to talk about is fucking Pokemon. I don't know Pokemon. I don't enjoy Pokemon. I don't want to know Pokemon. It's exhausting. Can we talk about those Pokemon cards for a minute? Sure. The Easter Bunny. Got Enzo some fucking great Pokemon cards. He was extremely excited about all that. Dude, he was like, what? Easter Bunny? How did they get all these amazing ones? I was just over there like, yeah, that's fucking right, bro. <laughs> if you only knew. That was, a, mom, that knew. was a mama deal. You would have been so excited that mom had. You actually... told me you were going to get like a garage sale to get Pokemon. I'm like, who has Pokemon cards at a garage sale? Oh, God, all the time. People do. I mean, I probably paid way over market because I paid like three fifty a piece for those like nice ones. Like three hundred and fifty dollars a piece. No, 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 no. Three dollars and fifty cents a piece. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you have a minor heart attack? <laughs> well, he's told me how much some of them are worth. He's like, yeah, me and my dad will look them up all the time, and some of these are worth like five thousand dollars. I'm like, which ones? Bring them here. <laughs> why, why, why have you not <laughs> sold them, sir? <laughs> We don't need to be collecting shit like that. You have brothers that are going to destroy it anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, here, give me the card. I can make a photocopy of it. All right, I can make you all the Pokemon cards you want with your $5,000. I don't know. With everything else that's been going on this week, I think that was a huge win. That was a huge win. Dude, I'm so fucking proud. Yeah. So proud of you. So proud of Enzo. Not proud of the selective hearing, but, you know. I don't know. I think the, 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 the moral of this story is that... 
Enzo's you a boy gotta, genius. Well, yeah, Enzo's a boy genius, but you just got to take your wins when you can get them. Life is full of a lot of losses, and, uh, you know, some every once in a while a blind squirrel gets a nut. So, tonight we got our nut. We did something right by putting him in therapy. <laughs> to talk, to learn how to talk about emotions. I'm wondering, uh, well, I'm, like, you know, I'm trying to work that through with a Rhett, you know, and, and God, have you seen his his freaking tantrums are <laughs> out of control. <sighs> he that lost dude. his mind this morning, and Susan saw me fucking snap hard at him too. Um, oh, I was like, I was going to put Arlo down for a nap, and Rhett was irate that uh, he had just gotten home recently and he wanted to nurse, and I was putting Arlo down for a nap, and I was like, hey, I'll be out in two minutes. And I, like, closed the gate that we had outside of our bedroom door because Rhett knows how to open doors. So we have a gate outside of our bedroom door. And, like, Arlo falls asleep. And then Rhett decides, this is the exact moment I want to shriek in anger. Multiple times in a row. I'm like, oh, my God. Which, which our bedroom that Arlo sleeps in is right off of our... Living room. Oh no, he was at the door anyway. He was at the gate, standing there shaking the gate. So you hear the gate shaking, you hear him screaming, Arlo starts wailing because he hears Rhett screaming, so he thinks, five alarm fire, the world's ending, guys, let me distress call. I was like, holy, I like opened the door and I was like, go away to the couch, you're not helping, stop. And Susan looked at me like, eh. No, I was like, oh, sorry, yeah. Not, yeah, no. <laughs> it's it's fucking like, three or two. Or I two. I don't know what fucking old is. He, like, looked at me and pouted and, like, turned and stomped over to the couch all mad. <laughs> like, he knew exactly what I said. Well, he just wasn't he does, happy about he it. He doesn't give shit. He'll, he'll walk away. He does this, like, weird fucking where he'll turn his back and shrug his arms and, like, pout, and then he fucking walks away. Like, he goes, like, <laughs> that dude is full of so much fucking attitude. Oh, God. He is completely opposite of Enzo. Like, I mean, Enzo's attitude but different. Enzo is scared of everything. He's scared of his own fucking shadow. But Brett <laughs> is out here fucking riding a wall on his bike, and I'm, I'm like, he's two years old, and I'm like... He's riding know, the ledge of, along the wall. On his little bike. It's like a little... It's a... I shouldn't say a wall. It's a planter box, so it's up, like, what, nine inches off yeah, the ground? Yeah, but I mean, it's still... But he rides his bike on it, and we're like, dude, you're evil can evil. Stop it. You're gonna hurt yourself. Or he dives off the back of the couch. I'm like, dude, <sighs> you're freaking two years old, man. He's constantly bruised. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> crazy child yeah he was uh he was not happy about the lack of milkies this morning they weren't on his timeline they're so it's it's so interesting how they're so different and it's going to be so interesting as he gets older to like figure out how to parent to to each kid individually well and they say that about kids you know all the personalities are different you got to teach you got to parent them differently like individually that's right you, you can't you can't, up, you can't like parent them up. the same because they're Adapter, pretty, move on. Yeah, pretty much. They're pretty much, you know, they're on their own individual. They got to be taught differently, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm really, really curious about Arlo because he could go one of two ways. And I'm not sure which one he is more leaning. Some days I'm like, with how moody he can be, I'm like, oh, yeah. How, how bad oh, yeah, he gets about milk? Yeah, you're, you're, you're leaning that, 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 uh, that ret way, you know? <laughs> But then other days, he's so fucking chill. Yeah, and then, then other days, he's completely awesome and the easiest baby. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe you're leaning more towards the Enzo. Or or maybe he's just going to, you Be know, he, he's going he's gonna to be his own classification. And we're really not going to know what to do. He's going to be the funny one. That's what I've decided. He's probably going to be the funny one. The youngest? I was the funny one. I was the youngest by mm-hmm. family. I was the funny I was the awesome one. He before. laughs at fucking everything. My parents hated me. So did my sisters. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, it's been a it's been a it's been a crazy week. For sure. I feel like every week that you know, as these kids are growing, things are changing and we we have more and more shit happening that we get these and we're dealing more and more with emotions. Like me and you are very Yes, I wear my, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve, so do you, but for the most part, we're not very emotional beings. Like, we're not... 
I cry, but that's my body's. Like you get mad. And I, I get cry. angry. You cry, um, and then it's I get each of our body's way of releasing emotion tension. Yeah, I remember when you when we first started dating. I didn't know what to do with your crying. I was like, holy fuck, I really fucked her up. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, hey, this is just how my body releases emotional tension. I'm like, holy shit, what's this crying? Okay. You're like, why are you crying? I'm like, because I'm upset. I'm not sad. I'm angry or I'm frustrated. And you're like, why do you cry when you're angry or frustrated? <laughs> Oh, it's terrifying. I'm sure. It, it fucking sucks. It's definitely not fun. I'm like, I really don't know what to do with this right now. I don't know. Arlo changed this week, too. Have you noticed he now is aware He's, when yeah. you go to put him down for a nap and he expresses his disdain for it? Mm-hmm. He never used, like, a week ago, he wasn't like that. Now he's like, ah. I told you what he did today, right, when I handed him off to Susan? No. So he had fed, I, he had just gotten up from a nap. I fed him a bottle. Um, he was good to go, fresh diaper, um, and we had our meeting. So I went over to hand him to Susan, and you know, Susan, he you know he knows Susan, but he immediately because I I faced him face to face with her, so he could see what I was doing. I took him over and handed, and he looks back like a fucking spawn of Satan, and it, like creepily, and <laughs> wails <laughs> just. Fucking loses it. <laughs> Just mad. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, that wasn't what you wanted. <laughs> Apparently not. He's like, this is not mom. <laughs> Why are you passing me off? Ah. Uh, it's interesting, though, to see even how much he's grown and how much he's starting to have his little personality come out. And, like, he yeah, finds we, things funny now, too. Yeah, we were going through pictures, what, last weekend? And we were starting to realize how much he looks like Rhett. When he, at that age, yeah, like they have a lot of similarities. It's crazy because as a newborn, he didn't look anything like Rhett, and now all of a sudden they look really similar. It's crazy. crazy well, crazy. we appreciate it. It was a long week. We have a ways to go, but I'm sure we'll have more fun stories. So, Thanks for listening. Take care, guys. Thanks everybody for listening. You can check us out at freezermilk.com or Instagram. Freezer Milk Podcast. Until next week, guys. Thanks. Don't forget, parenting's a trip. We are all here on the journey with you together. Thanks so much for listening.